I want to give a shout out to our friends over at Golf Pride. In golf, light grip pressure releases power. Golf Pride engineered a secret that pros know. A larger lower hand encourages lighter pressure. Plus four technology is designed with four additional layers, which reduces tension in the lower hand to generate more power. Play plus four and release the secret pros know. Now available on Tour Velvet, the winningest grip on tour. Grip confidence, grip golf pride. I want to welcome our newest sponsor, Two Under Men's Performance Briefs, the unofficial underwear of the PGA Tour. Worn by PGA Tour players like Ricky Fowler, David Toms, Jerry Kelly, William McGirt, Jason Kokrak, and Matt Everett, to name just a few. Your buddies are going to think you're a stud if they're even seeing you in your underwear, but that's another story. And your girlfriend and her wife is going to love the side effects, a visibly enhanced profile. The Joey Pouch technology provides the ultimate male asset management. It separates a man's most valuable assets from bodily contact to reduce unwanted skin-on-skin contact, providing less chafing, more control, and an altogether more luxurious feel. Start every round two under by wearing the coolest performance briefs on the market. Use code ONTHET20 to save 20% off your order at 2under.com. And that's the number two, U-N-D-R dot com. All right, now back with me here on the French Lick Resort guest line is Andy Lano. Andy has become a regular here on the show lately, which is fantastic news for me and for you, because he is a a wonderful person, first of all, and uh, a world of great stories. And... um, you look back at his time caddying for 20 years on the PGA and the LPGA tours, on the bag for a decade with Kenny Perry. He's also caddy for Tom Watson, Peter Jacobson, Nick Faldo, Shea Revy, Michelle Wee when she was out on the, uh, challenging the guys out on the, uh, PGA tour, plus our good friends Dave Stockton and Richard Zokel. Um, but it just, you know, uh, when I got to meet Andy for the first time and have him on the show, just absolutely blew me away with what a wonderful person he is and getting to know him a little bit more over the weeks and texting back and forth and hearing his stories and his time, uh, not only on the bag, but the things that he's doing now post his, uh, his, his, uh, caddy career, got a wonderful company that he started called golf mastery, golfmastery.net. Please go online and check that out. And I'm very excited. He's back with me again tonight here on next on the T. Hey, Andy, how are you? Chris, I'm doing great. I've, uh, been fortunate enough to be coming off a family retreat and, uh, Reset for the rest of the summer and out here in beautiful, sunny Washington. 90 degrees and not a cloud in the sky, so things are looking good out here. (laughs) Good for you. Always a treat to be on next on the tee. I appreciate that very much. So, Andy, as you and I were, were texting back and forth between shows over the last few weeks, what I've learned about you and learned about really the game of golf is that there's all kinds of six degrees of Kevin Bacon. I've had Kevin Roman and Andy Trainer plus Shane LeBaron last week on recently. They're all Plain Truth Level 3 certified instructors, and they've all learned, you know, through Chris O'Connell and Jim Hardy. Well, as, as I found out from you, Chris Caddy for Peter Jacobson for a time. You guys actually roomed together at one point. Talk about your connection to Chris and those guys. Yeah, I mean, you said it right there. Golf is amazing with the way that it brings people together from every corner of this earth. And it, and the more that you're involved with golf, um, the more that you'll see that, you know, for those of, that have either been involved with golf or, you know, like you and me, you know, are all into it and love it and have loved it for a long, long time. But, I mean, honestly, I give golf all the credit for all the many fantastic people I've been able to meet along the way. But, yeah, uh, Chris... You know, he came out on, on tour, um, obviously to Cat. He was a very good player in his own right and, uh, you know, had aspirations to play and wanted to come out and caddy and kind of get a look, see what it takes, that kind of thing. And, you know, I was friendly with Peter and Fluff and, you know, he was looking for, you know, some, somebody to stay with, you know, while he was out there. So we ended up being roommates and, uh, you know, we, we got to know each other pretty good. I mean, he, he caddied, uh, for a short stint out there, and then he went on to be, as you know, now one of the top instructors, you know, that we have. So, uh, small world, at the time, he wasn't intended to be an instructor. I don't know, maybe he was, but I know he wanted to play, because like I said, outstanding player, and was trying to get some, some nuggets from the, from the boys out there to see if he could take his game up a notch. And Andy, you know, when we were talking to, uh, uh, Andy Trainer. 
who um, also worked with Chris, I mean, uh, Tony Romo, and helping him develop his game. And uh, you were hired to caddy for Romo during the 2008 U.S. Open qualifier. And he said he's one of the hardest working students that he's ever had. So curious to get your memories of uh, your time working with Romo. Yeah, I mean, it was it was uh, interesting because I had, I've been living in Dallas since 1995, and, and Tony kind of came to town shortly thereafter for his career. But, you know, I had some connections there, and they were, as it turned out, ended up being connected with Tony. And, you know, they knew and found out very quickly what a very good player Tony was even before he started getting real serious. I mean, as you can imagine, Tony's a natural athlete, in, you know, in a lot of things, basketball, golf, obviously football. But anyhow, that connection um, led to um, there was a week off, and I happened to be in town, and you know, they asked if I would be interested in going out and trying to, you know, caddy for Romo at, at his U.S. Open qualifier because he tried it, you know, quite a few years in a row. You know, it's a good release for these pro athletes to go kind of do something else. And it gets them away, and it, it still keeps their competitive juices up, et cetera, as you can imagine. I mean, Brady loves golf. There's several of the quarterbacks. They love golf. But anyway, I, I agreed. And so I went out, and I scouted this course. He was playing as uh, the golf club of Dallas. And I'd never seen him hit a shot. And I went out and did my due diligence, so to speak. And I just met him out there for, um, you know, 18-hole qualifier out there. And uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. I can tell you the – the interesting story of it all is he drives up, gets out of the car, and I'm waiting for him. And, you know, we grab the bag, and, you know, he's obviously on time. We're going to the tee. And, and um, you know, we get over to the tee, and I, and I say, well, Tony, I go, I got to tell you something. And he goes, what's that? I go, well, I, I'm not a Cowboys fan. I go, Tom Brady's my favorite player. But I said, today it's me and you. We're going to go get him. And he just looked at me and kind of smiled. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, it was a great experience. Uh very, I mean, I could tell just in warm-ups that obviously he was a very good player, and uh, we had an excellent time out there, and he just missed qualifying, but the four and a half hours I spent out there with him was really a lot of fun, and I think he enjoyed uh, having a chance to get, like, some insight from a professional, you know, uh, on my end of the on the of the deal, since I do that on at the time, was doing it on a daily basis. And Andy... A couple of weeks ago on that same show with Andy Trainer, Ted Purdy told the story about playing in the 2005 Open Championship, which was Jack Nicholas's last Open, last tournament appearance, really. And Ted talked about the special five-pound British notes that were created to commemorate that event and how the players were getting uh, Mr. Nicholas to sign their uh, their uh, notes there. And, uh, and you were there as well. You got a couple of those notes, too. Do you mind sharing what you remember about being a part of the 2005 Open Championship? Okay, so so for the 2005, I, I wasn't there, but I got my hands on some notes. So my, my player opted not to go that year, um, but I got the notes. But it was nice to be able to get those signed by Mr. Nicholas. And, you know, to obviously have that mem memoir tied in with some of the previous history that as as it turned out that I was able to fortunately have with you know with Mr. Nicholas with Kenny Perry's first win on the PGA Tour being at Muirfield, so it was really cool for that you know all that stuff to fall into place. You know you really don't know in life as you know every day there's surprises, there's new things that happen. But when you look back on it, it's pretty amazing on the stuff that did fall into place. You know because of golf, because golf brings everybody together and. You know, investing in a lifetime sport, like I try to, you know, one of my keys in my golf mastery that I've developed, you know, that I'm in my new business is, you know, it's a lifetime sport. Invest in it. And Andy, as you, you talked about Kenny Perry getting his first win at the 91 Memorial. He would go on to win it again, I believe, in 2003. Kenny and Mr. Nicholas obviously have a very special relationship. He's a Nicholas brand ambassador now out on the Champions Tour. What, what have you seen with their relationship? What is that like, and what have their interactions been like over the years? Well, I mean, Kenny, you know, for, Kenny has, I think he's won Memorial maybe two or three, maybe three times. He loved that place, and that course was just perfect for him. But with Mr. Nicholas, the very neat thing that I saw with him and that he's very consistent with over the years is 
whether it was Kenny Perry or Hale Irwin or Tiger Woods or anybody that ever won his tournament, he always created a bond with them of some sort. And whether it was seeing them at the Masters or seeing them annually, obviously, at his tournament. But Kenny always treasured the time that he could spend with Jack and be able to talk to him about golf. I mean, when Kenny won, he was a young pro. He was in his fifth year. So, I mean, it was valuable for him at that time for his career as, you know, he went on to win, you know, 13 more PGA Tour events and now 10 more uh, on the Champions Tour with a couple majors. So, you know, that was a big day for Kenny and it's actually a day that, that really, you know, he didn't expect to come, you know, that, that soon because he, he was a super talented guy, but you just in golf, you just don't know. But I know Mr. Nichols has been great in, in helping him. Uh, along the way with all, obviously his great experience. And I know that now, ironically, like you said, he's, he's wearing the, uh, the Nicholas, um, gear, so to speak. He's got the, the, the wear going the last time I saw him. So that's, that's pretty cool stuff. I know for Kenny. And you were sharing a, a handful of pictures with me. You've got a lot of Jack Nicholas sort of memorabilia in your collection. Talk about some of the things you've been able to collect over the years. Well, the, the, well, the first coolest thing I got was that day when we won, you know, we were both like over the moon. I mean, I was quite, you know, I mean, when you're, you know, when you start caddying, you really don't know as a pro caddy how it's going to go or where it's going to go. But you, you obviously know that your goal is to win, you know, or try to be with a golfer that wins. And when that happened, it happened, you know, and it was a surprise to, to me. Not that I didn't have the confidence in Kenny, but you just don't know when it's going to happen. And to beat Hale Irwin in an extra hole, you know, the U.S. Open champ multiple times, it was an absolute thrill. So we're standing there on the putting green after Kenny's getting his awards. You know, he's getting his award and they're having the ceremony and I have my yardage book there. And, and so Mr. Nicholas happened to be not too far away. And I went up and I said, Mr. Nicholas, could you, would you please sign my yardage book? He said, no problem. And he signed the yardage book, which I still have. I, I kind of put it away, I put it aside in a box or whatever. And I actually used it years after until the course changed a little bit because I figured it was lucky. But yeah, I got that and I've got <laughs> one of his game, yeah, I've got one of his game used balls and I got the note that you mentioned. And then later on, a couple of years later, in between a break, he was looking for a caddy and I wrote him a letter and asked him if I could be, you know, on a tryout basis. Or, or try out to be his caddy because his sons were moving on to things. And, you know, he was kind of just kind of playing, you know, part, I don't want part time golf, so to speak, but he still needed a caddy. So, you know, I wasn't able to get that job, but it, you know, the class that he has, he wrote me a letter sent, I mean, you know, back in the days where you didn't have internet and texting and he, you know, he dictated or somebody dictated a letter. He signed it and sent it to me and I still have it. So, I mean, that and I, and I have one of his rookie cards that I just happen to be in a card shop because I collect sports cards and I saw this thing and I'm like, wow, I've never seen this card. It's a 1971, you know, HOF rookie card. So I figured, you know what? I, I got to grab this thing. I just do. You know, the guy's 18 majors. I mean, until, you know, he's one of the greatest golfers ever and I've put 25 years of my life into the tour. So I said, you know what? This is something I got to have. So. It, it went into the collection box. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy, speaking of special moments, you had a moment with Mr. Palmer that uh, you were telling me about a conversation, one, a nice one-on-one conversation you had with him in the locker room of Bay Hill back in, uh, I think it was 2005, after you and Kenny won that tournament. What was it like getting to spend a uh, kind of a private minute with Mr. Palmer? Yeah, that, again, that was a total surprise. So, I mean, you're probably, you're familiar with how the tournaments go down. You know, your guy wins, and I'll see you at the locker room after. And basically, within 20 minutes outside of the press and your golfer, I mean, it's like a ghost town at the, cl- at the club because every, all the people leave. I mean, everybody's out of there. So I'm sitting there waiting around in the locker room, and there's just a locker room attendant and myself. And, you know, the, and the guy, you know, I was just sitting there waiting for Kenny and Mr. Palmer had finished his duties and he comes whipping around the corner and he looked at me, he saw me by Kenny's bag. He said, Hey, how about a beer? And I'm like, I'm not going to refuse that. I mean, I said, for sure. 
So, you know, I had a sip and we, you know, he, he, he thought, you know, it was great that Kenny won and then he had to move on to something, but it was, it was really cool. And I was just sitting there after he left going, wow, uh, what, what just happened here? And, and then when I told Kenny, you know, guys, Kenny's over still in the press room wrapping up stuff and he just kind of smiled. And I mean, things like that again happen because of golf. I mean, the people that I've been able to be fortunate enough and blessed to be able to walk next to and to be able to, you know, see how they practice, you know, being paired with Tiger Woods or being out with Nick Faldo and being, you know, watching all the le- different levels. Byron Nelson, one of my favorites, you know, obviously at the Byron Nelson in Dallas where I live, he would be on that tee at Augusta every year and he'd go up and chat with him. He, I mean, it was just, it was priceless. It was precious stuff that I can't even really you know, put in the words sometimes. Andy, a couple more before I let you go. First, talk about the company that you've uh, you've started now, Golf Mastery. Remind our listeners what you're doing. Yeah, so golfmastery.net. So what I've tried to do with with my 25 years of, of walking with the with the best and the greatest and seeing how they you know do how they practice and how they approach things and how they you know become the great golfers that they are, trying to share those those nuggets of wisdom and knowledge with any any type of level of golf. I mean, obviously, the youngsters is, is a great start, but I mean, it's I'm just trying to basically get people, like we've talked about, to invest in the game of, of golf for a lifetime. I mean, there's so many other, there's so many outside benefits that parallel life. I mean, obviously, you know, in golf is it's, it's, it's outdoors, it's exercise, it's mixing it up with all kinds of you know, people, whether it's race, religion, you know, it, there's just, there's no limits to golf. Like I, like I speak, you know, to my juniors, I say, it's, it's all on you. You don't need anybody to play catch and you don't need anybody to go retrieve a ball for you. You can go and you can practice putting and you can hit balls. And basically I'm just trying to inspire folks and just lend some of my wisdom and knowledge that I've been able to be fortunate enough to witness with my own eyes and try to share that with some of these kids that, you know, that are inspired to try to do the same thing. Andy, I'm, uh, I'm getting ready to head up to, uh, to Boston on uh, Thursday. My son and I are going to be taking in a couple of Red Sox games at Fenway. Looking forward to sharing that experience with him. Got to get your thoughts on the Red Sox before I let you go. Any hope uh, left for this team for this year? I mean, I, the bottom line is, I mean, to me, at this point, it's all been about the pitching. So, I mean, the right. hitting, they're ranked number one in the league, as you know, so it's not about scoring runs. But, I mean, every night, you know, they, they, if they, the pitchers are giving up six, seven, eight, nine, ten runs, and they're just not really holding up their end. So, I mean, the way the Yankees are hitting the ball and some of the other teams, I, don't, I, I mean, I'm not going to give up on them. There's still, I don't know, 50, 60 games left. And, you, you know, you can get a hot streak and get in the wild card, and then you never know, right? But the pitchers are going to somehow have to switch gears because if this keeps up, I would have to say no, um, you know, by everything yeah. I've seen. But, I mean, the offense is certainly not going to be the problem. So that will be fun to go to Fenway. It's always a treat to be there and to regardless of how they're doing because that is one fun place, as you know. Absolutely. Can't wait to be there. Andy, thank you so much for your time, my friend. Always good having you as part of the show. I can't thank you enough for, uh, for becoming a semi-regular here over the last couple of months. It's really been great hearing your stories from inside the ropes and your experiences and that sort of thing. I hope you'll continue to come back and join me. Well, thank you very much, Chris. It's a pleasure and a treat to be able to share them. And like I said, I'm always here for you. If you need any fillers, I, I can, I'm usually here for you. You can count on me. And, and again, thanks very much for inviting me to, to share to share these stories. I appreciate it. Thank you, Andy. Take care, my friend. I look forward to catching up with you again real soon. All right, you too. Go Sox. Go Sox, indeed. See you, Andy. That's Andy Lano. L-A-N-O. Golfmastery.net is the site. A Lano, I-I, and for the second, obviously, is uh, where you can find him on social media. He's uh, He's been fantastic, and I really can't thank him enough for being kind and generous with his time and coming back and being a part of the show here over the last probably month and a half or two. So uh, he's great. Follow him and uh, look forward to getting him back on the show.